चला जाता हूँ अरे बी एन सी में कायाक बोट लेके घूमने के लिए इज द काइंड ऑफ सॉन्ग माई नेक्स्ट पॉडकास्ट गेस्ट विल काइंड ऑफ सिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द फीट ही हैज डन राइट इन द अरेबियन सी मिस्टर कौस्तुभ खाडे वेलकम टू द पॉडकास्ट सर वेलकम टू सोलोकोबल पॉडकास्ट एंड बिलीव मी दिस हैज बीन अ लॉन्ग टाइम ड्रीम टू इंटरव्यू यू एंड आई जस्ट कॉन्ट डिस्टर्ब इन वर्ड्स हाउ एक्साइटेड आई एम Oh, happy to be here. Happy to be here. Uh, the reason why I uh, uh, started interviewing you is because um, before I started this podcast, uh, I was a big fan of Joe Rogan's podcast, and he used to interview a lot of uh, people who are into adventure and who do crazy things. Like I don't know, you must have heard names like Colin mm-hmm. O'Brady or Alex Honnold or something like that, right? So I was like, sure. there must be someone from India who who's doing this, and mm-hmm. I've always been wondering, and I just spent like. few months wondering about it and then out of nowhere out of the blue i stumbled upon your video on the okri mm-hmm. sports okay uh huh uh huh and yeah. that is where i got to know your story and the your story of you know you have uh, kayaked all the way uh, on from gujarat to what kanyakumari right so that was uh, my dwarka and gujarat to kanyakumari right. right so let me just uh, put what you've did in perspective here i'm going to show in my 10 cm phone if you folks can see mm-hmm. mr kaustik khare he paddled all the all the way from here to here the entire west coast in a little kayak boat with his bare hands and yeah and that is the reason why i was excited to invite him because i love adventures um so once again sir thank you very much for doing this thank you very much for your time sorry for delaying we should have done this last week first to kayak no is worries. that right sir and you kayaked and what your missus yeah. was parallelly cycling along the entire west coast and just you both were meeting yeah. every now and then uh, every day or couple of days so we'll talk about how that all that went but uh, sure. what a feat sure. sir i mean uh, you look back right now you you are working in the corporate world you're supposed to look like a classic or corporate uncle with big belly and you know big glasses sipping <laughs> sipping green tea assuming that you will be healthy but you're not sir so from there to where what what have you done how how's your journey been uh you mean from the kayaking world to the to the corporate world or the let's, other way around uh, let's take it from the bottom right where did this come from sure. right so why yeah. how when let's begin how you got into kayaking first Well, uh, I got into kayaking the way most people in India get into kayaking, which is incidentally, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I just happened to be at a beach that there was a kayak at. Mm-hmm. I think that's where most people uh, first come across it. So it's either some resort uh, or it's down at a beach, and you see this thing, and you see some people. Invariably, uh, they're usually foreigners who are who are taken to the sea. Uh, I started this back in 2010, so it's it's been like over 10 years now, right? Uh, 29 2009 or 2010 yeah mm-hmm. somewhere around then and uh, i just happened to see um or come across kayaks in uh, palolim mm-hmm. which is in south goa, goa. and uh, i i get it you were in goa taking you yeah right it, it had to be it had yeah. to be from goa and uh, we, we were in goa we were in this beach called palolim and they were running these uh motorboat ferries to go and see some dolphins mm-hmm. um and basically i i said okay maybe the motorboat is uh could be scaring away the fishes mm-hmm. uh so there was the kayak option available so it was me and my friend and we both got into the kayak it's a two seater kayak um and we just kayaked about 1 and 1/2 to 2 kilometers into the water mm-hmm. right uh, knowing nothing about about the water conditions about wind about the tidal conditions none, none of that stuff uh but we just loved it i just i just fell in love with the sport because it felt uh slightly reckless right it felt like uh, a bit of adventure that uh, you wouldn't get in uh, in your regular life uh, right. and that incidentally that trip was so fortuitous that um on the same trip while i was headed back to bombay which, which is where i stayed or used to stay at least um i happened by a boat show which happens in punjab every december and uh, at the at the boat show Oh, I I just walked in and said, okay, let's see if anybody can ship some kayaks to Bombay. Mm. I I had no clue about uh, about the kayaking scene at all, um, and I found I found two two chaps who were very eager to sell send me uh, send me a kayak, right? And I got right. both their brochures, and the chap like mm. you know, we haggled on the price, so on and so forth. And the third guy, uh, he was the first one to who asked me, have you ever kayaked before? <laughs> right and i was like what is this guy's problem because like i'm a pro i've done it twice 
right? And uh, what's there? You're just growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem that tough. And uh, and then that chap uh, turned out to be uh, somebody who headed a kayaking center back in Bombay. Mm. And he said, "Why don't you come down to Bombay and uh, and, I'll, and I'll just teach you, and uh, and then you can decide on whether you want to buy a kayak or not, right?" right? Uh, and that's how I first started up on it, and and then slowly like things just kind of fell into place, right? And it was just more about okay, like I have a fairly curious mind, mm. uh, so when an opportunity presented itself, I just jumped onto it. Uh, the same way I trained. And I ended up training under a 12-time world champion for surf ski or kayaking. Right. Uh, I trained under uh, a world champion, uh, an Olympic medalist, right, uh, for canoeing. Right. Mm. Uh, all of these things built up, and I made the national team in 2012. Right. Uh, and then again in 2013. Right. Uh, I went down to two Asian championships. Yes. Right. Uh, and this was in the early stages. Right. While I was still juggling a corporate life or early yeah. corporate life. And, just, just, let's just, just pause the right time. there. Just, let's just pause right there. Mm -hmm. um, we'll continue it. Mm -hmm. You are, you are an IIT student, right? You're an IIT student and then you entered mm -hmm. what? You were working, parallel you were working in the corporate world, right? I was, I was. So I was, a, uh, so I'm a computer science graduate from IIT Delhi, right? Mm. Uh, and at the same time, I joined as a developer, mm. right? And, Classic, uh, yeah. And I was, yeah, and I was just doing uh, BlackBerry development back in 2009, 2010. Wow. Uh, it was a fairly interesting product that we were working on, mm -hmm. right? So the, so the challenge from the corporate world was there. Uh, and at the same time, it allowed me some freedom because you're not entirely like, uh, you're not up the ladder, so so you can go and carve out your own time. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my spare time, that's kind of what I did. I just, I just trained really hard. Mm -hmm. I'd just be on the water, uh, like probably... During training, it's like four times a week that you're on the water, right? Right, uh, and and so so that was fairly uh, fairly useful to have some amount of discipline around around mm. your training, mm. right? And I, I think that's like fundamental, right? Like you can't possibly achieve anything until you've uh, done the hours uh, training, right? So so that's why in the first few years it was okay to do that, hold down a job, and at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, you know be competitive, I guess. Hmm. Uh, but then after a while, in uh, after after my second Asians, I realized that, okay, this is not something that will like pan out in the long run. Um, and at the same time, I felt that India, from a sports perspective, wasn't really going anywhere with kayaking, yeah. right? Uh, and I felt that, okay, there's got to be something that just like, in a sense, um, pushes some life back into the sport, hmm. right? And I felt that that was like my obligation because I'd kayaked alongside a bunch of uh, people who've who've, uh, who've not been as fortunate as me, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, are still representing the country. Right. right. A lot of Indian sportsmen are out there still struggling. They don't really have a plan. Uh, there's a semblance of a... We're, we're, we're talking about non-cricketing so sportsmen. Non-cricketing sportsmen. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 cricket is not a sport. Offended. Actual, yeah, uh, uh, most of the actual sportsmen in India, yeah, are are, uh, are actually like really working hard to uh, make ends meet, you know. And even after, right. even after they've done their time, it's difficult for them to etch out a career. Right. Right. And uh, and I I kind of pegged all of this down to purely just being uh, yeah. about the fact that nobody really knows what kayaking is. Right? Yes. Like half the times, uh, and it's and it's still a story because I even when I. Uh, of course, my wife doesn't agree with me here, mm -hmm. uh, but I tell people that uh, that I kayaked and she cycled, uh, you know, the whole west coast of India, uh, and most of the people just don't understand what kayaking is, and they look at her immediately and they're like, "You cycled that whole way, right?" Because it, it's a it's a sport that people can relate to, right? I, I uh, just I was just I was cycling. just telling my brother I was uh, just telling my brother no yeah. I was just telling my brother, like, uh, I'm going to interview this uh, person mm -hmm. who, who has kayaked all the way from here. Like, he's like, what is kayaking in the first place? So that... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you know, most people don't understand it. Yep. Most people don't know what a kayak is. Right. Yep. Uh, um, I'm not sure what, what, what they think it is. They, they probably might think it's a motor powered thing. But anyway, so, so I mostly pegged it down to that. It's just water sports in India does not have recognition right yeah. most people don't know about kayaking canoeing sailing mm. uh, 
uh, rowing has just come up because we made it to the Olympics. So it's, yeah. people have some notion about what it is. Uh, yeah. But I, I'd be surprised if people uh, thought rowing was not what uh, we did in uh, in the snake boats in Kerala. Right? Yeah. Uh, that people have a vague conception about what kayaking is. Uh, and I felt that that was an area that like some impact could be had. Right? Yeah. If, I, if I put out an expedition that seems pretty insane, right? Uh, then people might actually look at it and say, okay, okay that's interesting. So, so I felt that was like my impact. Mm. And um, uh, people who were doing long distance expeditions abroad. Right. right? And I said, uh, why can't we do this in India? Exactly. Uh, so I was like, I, have, I grew the 20th largest coast. Yeah. yeah. I grew up watching AXN videos. Yeah. 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 I, I grew up watching AXN videos mm-hmm. and you know, uh, all these, uh, yeah. all these, exp- all these base jumpers and skydivers and sure. rock climbers. Sure. Every single one is a white guy at the end of the day. Right. I, and yeah. I was like, where, sure. where are sure. the Indians? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, I, I grew up yeah. watching, I grew up watching Bear Grylls. I grew up watching Colin O'Brady. I grew up watching, you know, sure. Uh, and all these people and sure. i watched that uh, podcast with uh, uh, alex honnold and i was like i was so revved up i i cycled myself from for, from bangalore to nandi hills sure. <laughs> without any training but yeah i mean the the, the lack of representation <laughs> the lack of indian representation yeah. in in the adventure sport so to say and it, it I, I would i would say yeah i'd, I'd say it also comes down to uh, yeah, to, it actually comes down to, I think, uh, I'd say opportunity and uh, um, affordability too, right? right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a mix of both, yeah. right? And they work hand in hand. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean by opportunity, right? Mm. Like, uh, not everybody gets the opportunity to do something like this, yes. right? Uh, and the reason you don't get that opportunity is because there is no recognition for something like this, mm. right? Uh, uh, like... I mean, not to make it monetary, but the first expedition was entirely out of pocket, right? right? Uh, and and the second expedition, I, I managed to find a sponsor uh, when I had already gotten to Gujarat. Right. right? So I actually transferred uh, my kayak cycle, uh, you know, my girlfriend and I, my parents came along, right? Mm. Uh, and we were, we were in Gujarat and there's a good chance that, uh, that I would still have to uh, pay for the whole thing by myself, right? Yeah. Which means that only a very few select people can actually afford these sports, mm. right? Or afford these uh, aspirations. And right? you were and not even me. in news, right? No, when, yeah, yeah but when you were attempting, attempting something huge, right? Uh, I don't even know, like you were attempting this, right? It's like... No, so that's a fun, that's, no, I think that's a funny thing with Indian media, right? Like with Indian media, if, if they can get news for free, right? They will cover you, right? So so I didn't, I didn't suffer from... Uh, uh, from media attention, I was I was covered by all the national dailies. Uh, NDTV did a, uh, you know, uh, I was on NDTV 24/7 in right. their prime time 9 p.m. show or something like right. that. Uh, so actually, I got great attention. So Sports Illustrated covered me. A bunch of like fairly good magazines covered me. Red Bull is the first one to you know to jump on board if you give them photos. Right. Right. Uh, but it's not the, it's not just about that. It's about also the sponsors themselves not really taking the plunge. Mm. And I don't think that's really changed. Mm. Uh, like I would say that with SF, SF Watches, I think it's a fabulous sponsor, uh, great chaps. They, they actually saw the vision and said, okay, you know, what, go for it. Mm. Uh, but very, very few people were jumping on board, right, right. despite whatever you did. So it isn't easy to get something like this off the ground. Hmm. Right. Uh, but, but when I say recognition, I just mean more than just, you know, the, uh, the media attention, the media attention is great because media attention fades, right? It's, uh, it's like a, it's like a momentary spotlight, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm sure that's true of everything. Even, even yeah. the cricket, I'm just, sure that, just that like Sushant Chandra you know, News. Something. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll just, it'll just, I mean, the tide will just play a turn and it'll just be another person tomorrow. Right. Yep. But, uh, but recognition in terms of, is this something that is sustainable for us? for an athlete to continue down this field. Mm. But I mean, in 2013, it was the same case, right? I, I said that comparative kayaking is not going to take me anywhere, right. but uh, I'm never going to be able to. So, is, a life so is this, is this, so I was about to ask you the question, why? Because, you know, why that mm-hmm. thing from Gujarat to Kanyakumari, why did this thought come into your mind? So is this your answer? It's like you wanted to do something, uh, something that can really turn the eyeballs. Pretty much, pretty much. So it's, a, it's, it's not just the, 
Gujarat to Kanyakumari, right? Mm. The idea is to cover the whole coastline of India. Yeah. Right. Uh, incidentally, we, we were going to do that uh, this year. Yeah. Right. Uh, but then, of course, COVID happened. Right. Mm. So we were, we were uh, because you kind of had to gear up at least like six to nine months before an expedition. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's a minimum window to get people prepped. So I think in, I remember in January we talked about it. We said, okay, uh, is this is this a year? Are we going to go to the East Coast as well? Mm. Uh, and we were like fairly keen about it, but then. Because uh, things have turned out a different way now, okay. right? So, so can't say when that East Coast will happen. But the idea is to cover the whole coastline of India, right? right? And and have an like Indian do it, you know, like yeah. be the first person to uh, cover like all seven thousand five hundred, right? Right. So so that'll be fairly fairly epic, right? Yeah. And and the West Coast just happens to be part of it. Mm. And there are multitude of reasons why uh, an expedition of this nature is like broken up. Into into two parts, like weather being a you know, being a massive factor, right? Uh, because you've got to, uh, the different weather systems on the west coast and the east coast. Uh, so any which way I played it, I would always reach the east coast, uh, either having you know either battled a massive monsoon uh, or headed into like a cyclone. Right. You know, so so it had to be broken and had to like, say I'd do the next part another time, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and also from just a Pure, uh, I would say, media slash sponsorship perspective, uh, an expedition of this nature would, would take like six months, right? Right, and you could not sustain the the uh, um, the excitement, I'd say, or the uh, you know the tempo, uh, along with telling any sponsor that okay, listen, like in your next uh, calendar year, uh, I'm going to be gone for six months, and there's no guarantee that will happen, right? Uh, but you got to spend a whole bunch of money on it, right? So. For a multitude of reasons, we, we broke that up and said we just do the east, do the west coast first, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it was something that I had already prepped to a great extent. I'd done a pilot expedition yeah. uh, back in 2015. Mumbai to Goa, from, is it? Uh, Bombay to Goa. Yeah. Yeah. Mumbai to Goa. Yeah. And uh, and then this one just like built on top of that. So yeah. I kind of knew what the uh, what the west coast would look like around that time of year as well. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And then that's how we how we set in now uh, in March of that year I quit my job mm. right and Shanti quit her job as well and uh, and then she wanted to do the whole the whole peninsula as well uh, and I was also keen on doing it so we said okay this makes a lot of sense and then we uh, waited for the right weather window which came in November of that year uh, and then transported everything there. Hmm. What is common? among these adventurers, right, who take up these uh, ridiculous tasks, right? So, for example, p- p- people who climb uh, Mount Everest mm-hmm. without oxygen and, you know, this guy who walked across the Antarctica mm-hmm. alone, this guy who climbed the entire El Capitan without any rope. Uh, w- what is this common thread, if you yeah. can if you can observe uh, and, and break it down for us, for us normal folks? Uh, and and the funny thing is, I, I won't say that anybody, that, People can't do it. I'm sure. Mm. I mean, of course, the athletic ability is part of it, right? Mm. But I wouldn't say that gets you there. Mm. Like there are tons of examples of people with athletic ability who haven't been able to. I'm more uh, interested the in the mental part. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it actually just comes down to the to what is driving you, right? Mm. And uh, I mean, to give you an example, like my wife alone, right? Uh, I think back in 2015, right? Uh, we bought her first cycle. Mm-hmm. Right, like so. Uh, before that, of course, she knew how to cycle, but it was like when she was a child, right? Uh, yeah. And then we got her first cycle, I think, back in 2005. Uh, yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, within a year, she had, uh, I mean, within a year, uh, she had cycled from Bombay to Goa, right? And she had uh, cycled from uh, Manali to Kardunga, right? And, wow. and uh, I, mean, I mean, of course, she's, she's, she's fairly fit. Right, uh, but but a lot of it is just mental endurance, right? Yeah. It's just that she powers her way through stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, there were people on the Manali Khadumla Trail who were uh, who were way fitter, right? Who who been who been training a lot more, I'd say, right? Right. Uh, but when it came down to it, um, Shant was just uh, more driven to go and do this thing, right? Right. And I think of the twenty people that that attempted that. Uh, attempted that ride. She was, I think, uh, one of five or six people who finished it, right? And and the only girl who finished that 
right. uh, drive all the way up to Khadumla, right? And and that's insane. Like I don't see, see myself doing that. <laughs> so I've, I've been cycling my whole life, and I and I still think I would not. I wouldn't probably want to go up there. She sounds you know, like a good podcast guest. Sir. Not my thing she, anyway, but, uh, she sounds uh, like a good but, podcast but just, guest. Oh, <laughs> uh, she is. She is super shy. Okay. Uh, she 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 will not get in front of a camera. Like there was this time we we took her to a press conference in in Bombay, hmm. uh, and she was so nervous. She was okay. just so nervous. Uh, and I was like, "Listen, you've just completed this insane feat. What do you have to be nervous about?" Uh, but 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 Shant is, uh, yeah. I mean, you can try, but uh, <laughs> I have my reservations about we'll, how it. We'll we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, come back to your point, right? It's, right. it's yeah. It's it's more about the I'd say it's more about the mental fitness, right? Mm. Uh, and even then, like on this particular ex- expedition, um, and as with most expeditions, there's always uh, it also comes down to like the support staff and like who's powering you through this right. right on on this one like we were each other's support yeah to be very honest because uh i mean to put this into perspective like the whole west coast is like some 3300 odd kilometers right yeah. uh it's it uh, which is like six states and like some three u- union territories that we have to cover right it yeah. took us 83 days uh to to do this whole expedition right right, right. and uh and I, I think the first few months you're still uh, I'd say like when I did the Bombay Goa thing, right? Mm. Of course there was fatigue. Of course there was like wear and tear, right? But it was just a 17-day expedition, mm. right? Out of which we, uh, which I kayaked like 14 days. There was one day where everything went wrong. Uh, uh, so, so it took about 17 days to get there, right? And you can right. do something like that on pure adrenaline, I feel, mm. right? Like yeah. half a month, you could probably like do that. But when you when you're doing something which is like three months right mm. and every day you're in the water right every day you're wet okay every day it's like uh the sun is coming down every day you're just like doing a, like between half a marathon and one full marathon of kayaking right right like 21 kilometers to about 42 kilometers i, I topped out at about 45 kilometers uh, okay. at average about 35 to 40 or so something like that so right? minimum so 20 when you're doing this for like three months yeah. Minimum 20. Oh, minimum. It, 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 I think minimum would be like 25 or 28. Right. Or like that, right? Right. Uh, right. The only certain stretches where you're going to like just do about 20, 22 because it's uh, logistically impossible because the mm. next spot is going to be another mm. 10, 15 kilometers. Right. right. So you need to like pause at that particular beach. Mm. Uh, but, but yeah, if you're doing those kind of numbers and challenge would like at least do like 75 or so because she had to leave the beach then go alongside right. and then come back and yeah. uh, the road is not exactly straight right yeah uh, so you're doing something like that every say day in day out uh, like the fatigue is is saying you start to question like why you're doing this what is the motive uh, you know it, it's questionable because like there's not really like nobody's asking you to do this right like uh, and if you just take the you know uh, the foot off the pedal Right, nobody's going to like question you, right? Yeah. Uh, media doesn't care, right? Mm. Nobody's pumped in money to your expedition, right? right? So there's no financial obligation, mm. right? You're just doing this because of like some uh, stupid idea that you have, right? You, okay, this is something that I want to do. Uh, so it's basically just you. So it's it's about, uh, I mean, when Alex Honnold did that thing without the ropes, right? Yeah. Nobody else had done it, right? Uh, and that, that sounds suicidal. Right, yep. and it's a big feat for a reason, right? I mean, right. Uh, at any point of time, you just lose concentration for like yeah. seconds, and then you're done, right? Like, it's uh, it's insane. It's it's, it's, it's all feat. about Nobody's, it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like, can I push myself? How far can I push myself? I think that is yeah. the thing, right? It's yeah. like because I when I started doing my little uh, thing from Bangalore to Nandi Hills, I cycled oh. all the way uh, to the Nandi Hills, and when I was coming back, uh, last ten kilometers, sure. I gave up. I gave up. So of that, right. it, yeah, right. big, and and it's like, yeah. nope, I can't push myself apparently, and <laughs> and it takes something special to do something, uh, something like yeah. what you did, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, I'm saying, uh, so I mean, if you if you get up and the next day you're going to like attempt 80 kilometers, right? Mm. Uh, then it's going to be a bit of a challenge for anyone, yeah. Right? Even now, like if you ask me to go and do about 45 kilometers of kayaking, I'll probably do it. Right, but, right. but the next day will be horrible. Yeah. Right, and I won't be able to do this sustained thing day in and day mm. out. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's not easy for for anyone. Mm. 
but it comes down to just like at those particular moments where you're just like okay why why do i need to continue this yeah. and we face that like multiple times especially in kerala the karnataka and kerala were like our roughest uh, mm. because shantli's knees were like uh, were swollen up uh, yeah. my three fingers which hold the kayak the, the kayak uh, uh, paddle right uh, those were jammed so it's so i couldn't right. i couldn't straighten them like they were like they were literally just stuck like this uh, and and nothing nothing i mean we were doing like paracetamol we were trying the local anesthetics uh, nothing would like relieve the pain right it was mm. just uh, swollen and throbbing uh, and and you just needed to power down because you knew that you had to do like another 6 to 8 hours per day uh, right and this yeah and so so it, it just comes down to like uh, are you are you one mentally strong enough right and to it actually does come down to like you know who else is like with you on this journey mm. right for me like luckily Shanjali was there right and there are days that I'd break down she's like okay you know what we just need to get like another couple of days right, right. Or, uh, and we worked the same way with with her as well right we just mutually decided that okay today we're going to just like pause and not go anywhere yeah uh, which we <laughs> but but uh, i mean even those those days were like it, it was just like a crazy crazy trip because days that you typically are resting right yeah. uh, um and to be like equally uh you know arduous like enough for more work because suddenly you, you you'd be like kayaking or you'd be cycling for like four days or something like that four five days and you pulled up put out like a good uh you know 150 180 kilometers or something like that uh and then you and then you just realize that okay you got to like see you got to see through all that footage that was there or put out some photos for uh your sponsor you got to get the story straight uh you got to speak to some press chats or mm. you got to plan for the next like few the things or some permissions hanging in the balance right uh, got to sort out like your money problems whole bunch of like stuff so uh it's a, it's a, sometimes we were literally just like be happy to be back on the road you know it's just like oh my god you just have to like kayak we just had a cycle uh and and that's something we can like focus our energies on well, so, what, what, what what was what, what were your first few obstacles right it's like uh, because i was watching in the video in the gujarat uh, oh. that you didn't even get the permission to like get in the water in the first place right <laughs> yeah 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 I, i think i think when the minute you said that that's the thought that went through my mind as the first obstacle is to like Uh, it's like uh, yeah i mean i, I want to yeah i'm just i'm more curious about i'm more curious about like where uh, what was your planning like so what were your workouts like specifically for this uh, thing what was your mental prep mental exercises that you okay. had so i just i'm very curious about you know sure. behind the scenes pre pre uh, pre expedition if 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 i may sure sure uh so i mean i, I think the way that we break this down is um uh is one you work on uh, on the physical aspect right mm. physical is is both uh, uh, in the the gym. that you put in the gym mm. in the gym or, or or on the water if possible mm. right uh, but the other part is a diet right mm. uh, both of those go hand in hand so that's one part right uh, the second is the is the logistics of the whole thing right yeah. like uh, planning that out and figuring out okay what what makes sense from a, a weather perspective right, right. so and, and the, the and third part is like yeah uh, you know ensuring i mean part, this the part is part of the logistics is also trying to try figure out okay am i am i going to reach at a beach and fall into trouble right mm. uh, that's that's a that's very much a part of like uh, about kayaking in india right uh, and, and third major component to this is, is uh, finding the right sponsor right yeah. uh, because and and why why i stress so much on the sponsor bit right it's it's not just about the money right because that i can i can probably like afford right uh, but but it actually comes down to the eyeballs right since i set mm. out uh, on this thing with the objective of like getting people to understand what kayaking is mm. right uh, am i finding the right sponsor right is he ready to see like what is the vision of this project right, right. rather than you know force fit something there yeah uh, right so anyway let me let me start with the first one right which is the physical and the Uh, I can imagine the, a lot of rowing exercises and lat pullings and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not yeah. not particularly no not right. really. Really? No, okay. I really don't do that. Okay. Uh, most of it is just functional and core exercises, right? Mm-hmm. Uh 
and I'll tell you why because uh, it, most people don't know this, but kayaking is like a full body sport. Right. right? It, it, uh, it's, it's not a top heavy sport. Right. Right. Uh, and what that means is that everything from, uh, from your fingers to your toes uh, are going to come into play. Right? right. So a lot of it is just about ensuring that your core is fine. Right. Mm. So you'll actually notice that a lot of kayakers are not top heavy. Mm-hmm. Right. They actually like, uh, they uniformly fit. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, whereas canoers are top heavy. So, okay. uh, because that's, that's like full only top body. Right. Mm. So uh, a lot of the stuff that I do is just to ensure that like functionally I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing fine. Right. 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 Uh, and, uh, when it comes to the water and training on the water, there are basically just two, well, three, three parts to it. Right. Uh, uh, I do, uh, I do strength, which is stamina, right. Yeah. Uh, I do, uh, speed, right. Uh-huh. And then I do technical. Right. Uh, so, so, so stamina is, is, is very simple. Like I literally, yeah. you're just on the water for five hours. You take mm-hmm. like the shittiest, uh, possible kayak you can find, right. Uh, really weigh it down. Right. So I would take like a simple clunky plastic double kayak mm. uh, with a really heavy uh, paddle, right? a right. metal paddle. Uh, and then I'd just be out on the water for like uh, five hours, four to five right. hours, simply just that, just me by, uh, by myself out there with, with just water and some, uh, some edible stuff. Right. So, yeah. so that's what you do. And then uh, once, once you're out there and then you, realize that, that that's what it is then you bring in so, because you know that you're equipped with like so I, i've actually got spent some time and money to get that uh, get equipment in here right, right. Uh, so i have a really nice kayak right and mm-hmm. i have really nice paddles right not that that is really important but uh, because i've already done the stamina on right. uh, the plastic kayaks, right it's much easier on this right it's like uh, it's like you prep is, for the toughest uh, question paper so that you find yeah, it easy in the exam much. yeah pretty much pretty much and uh on the on the speed front right uh, there are some areas where you're going to get stuck uh, mm-hmm. there's some areas where you need to get out of there in a jiffy right right uh, uh, like i was stuck in a very questionable uh, area just uh, on the on the southern tip of view right oh. uh, which is Gujarat, like fairly crazy place where uh, there were a bunch of eddies the rocks were uh, were really forming up. There were waves. There was a crazy tidal influence. There was wind against me. Uh, pretty much all the elements were in play, mm. right? And it was quite uh, quite a, a trying area, trying spot I was in. In fact, this fisherman's boat actually took a U-turn to come and like actually see if I needed help. Oh, right. Uh, but by the time he reached me, right, uh, I'd already gotten out of there. Okay. Right, which means that you need to have like your speed. Uh, in those critical areas, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so that's the second part of it, and the third part is just technical, right? Uh, uh, which is, have I done some roll training? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I capsize, can I get into the kayak back again? Right. right? That is super critical, right? Yeah. right? To date, on an expedition, I've never fallen out of the kayak, right? But right. if I could, if I did, uh, one, it would probably mean that something is already wrong, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'm either exhausted or I'm in a really bad spot. Um, which means that like, if it came to that, then I need to be technically sound. I need to re-enter yeah. my kayak, uh, you know, the first time. Right. Right. I don't need another attempt because, uh, because the water is a very different creature, right? Like mm. you will tire yourself out if you're in the water, right? And not having done like very little, uh, I'd say physical exertion. Right. Right. Um, it just drains you. Right, uh, it seeps away uh, your heat. Yeah. Right, uh, you struggle more with it in a panicky environment. Yeah. Uh, invariably, you're going to like probably drink a little bit of water. Right, uh, you're not breathing right. You're not thinking right. So, technically, you need to be like on your game. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, so those, those are like the three main components. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and I would say that like. Uh, the mental aspect of it is, of course, is the endurance mental aspect. See, it. Yeah, it's like, really for me, it's like you said, uh, in the physical exam, uh, for the physical part, you just did tougher things so that it becomes easier in the expedition. What did you do for Pretty mental much. side? Yeah. What did you do for the mental side? What oh. What are the mental exercises, if, if you if you may, if, you, if we can put it that way? I, I wouldn't think that like, there are uh, 
some mental exercises per se. I, I'd say most people who are like into adventure sports like invariably have been beaten somewhere or the other. Right. right? So humility is like a big part of like what we do. Mm. Right? Like we know that uh, uh, that we can be beaten at any time. Right. right? And I'll, I'll give you this interesting quote or like this interesting thing. Uh, in the first expedition that uh, uh, we we had we had somebody who gave us a boat, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Who and that boat basically followed me. This is the right. first one, the one I did from Bombay to Goa, right? Right. Uh, and and it's a uh, uh, the person who gave me the boat is this amazing gentleman called Ashim Bongia, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a Juna Award winner, okay. uh, has represented India and won medals for us uh, mm-hmm. at the Asians in sailing, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and he gave me this boat, right? And and he understood the reason why first expedition should have a boat because nobody knows whether I'll come back alive or not. Right. right. Uh, um, and, and then just as we were like leaving and he'd given me a guy to go with it, hmm. he said, Ki, like, all you do is, you know, you just fuel the boat, pay, pay for that. And then uh, once you're done, like come back. Right? Right. And we were just having this chit chat and out of the blue, uh, it was just me, him and my dad. Uh, and he says, Ki, see, listen, boss, at any time, if you feel like, uh, uh, he, you know, let me get the, the words right. He's like, uh, don't be foolish and tempt nature, right? At any point of time, if you feel that something is going south, uh, you turn this whole expedition around and come back, right. right? And I think it was like superb advice, right? Like superb, right? And uh, um, and that's just pretty much it because you cannot don't, defeat nature. Generally. Don't don't let right. the overconfidence yeah. get the better of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much because like mm. like I said, the first one was like pure adrenaline, right? Mm. Like. I had like overcome pretty much every obstacle. Whole bunch of chaps had said, "No, you can't do this." Mm. Uh, a lot of people had, had like trained and uh, you know, kind of quit for years. You know, uh, said like, "This doesn't make sense. Why are you mm. doing this? Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, how are you going to like, you know, uh, get off work and do all of this uh, and pull it off?" Mm. And so, so just going into it, I was, I was just like completely adrenaline pumped right mm. uh, and there was some very sound advice he gave me he said hey, right. you know what like just calm down you're right. young like you can probably like turn this around and then come back and then yeah. try again right so so that was, that was i i think that's that's fairly true so so humility in these environments like is super critical mm. right uh, you need to know yourself right uh, that's also super critical right a lot of people just get into this and say okay i'm just going to do it right and right. that's my Biggest uh, concern with anybody taking up kayaking in general is just because they just hit it so hard, right? They just go like so all out on day one, right? And then on day two, they're just like, oh my God, my arms are dying and like my neck is twisted uh, and a whole bunch of like these other problems, right? And uh, and then they never pick it up again, right? right? So so knowing yourself is fairly important, right? Mm. And um, so so having having trained with people, having like done this before. Uh, you know, uh, uh, really helps from a mental perspective too, right. right? Because you know that okay, I think I can pull off another day, mm-hmm. right? And you can make that call to say that no, you know what, I just need the rest, right? Right. Uh, I mean, the first expedition, um, I in the first three days, I think we clocked like 120 kilometers or so, right? Uh, 110 right. or something like that, right? And we reached uh, Devega, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and in those three days, I basically slept like I think. 12 hours or something like that. Wow. Like 12 to 12 to yeah, about 12. Yeah, it was really bad. It was really yeah. bad. Uh, so by day four, when we actually got to uh, Riharishwar, mm-hmm. right, uh, I had a full blown fever. I had a fever, I had a cold, I was like completely right. exhausted, right? Uh, which is why I, think I did that uh, rest day mm. right, in Riharishwar. Uh, but a lot of it is, you know, despite like months of training, despite mm. months of like me going, um, you know, fairly hard, knowing like what the water conditions are, uh, how much rest I need, right? Uh, when it came down to it in the first three days, I like kind of defeated myself. Lord, right? Yeah. So, so it's, uh, it, it's about like pacing yourself or like at least understanding what your body wants or needs, right? And then, uh, and then taking it from there, right? Yeah. I mean, I was not like, Either way, the record was going to get set. It's not mm. like I was uh, running a mad clock. Yeah. Uh, it was just in my head that I wanted to go like really hard at this thing and just right. get it out of the way. But, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
what tell us about tell us about what went through during the expedition right so what so i just want to get start with what is your routine with the sleep cycle so when when did you kayak when did you rest what was oh. your what was your routine like a day in your expedition or an average oh. day in your expedition what is it like you started when like uh, yeah uh sure so i, I mean i'd love to uh, actually the, the whole routine really varied from when we started in gujarat by the time we got to kanyakumari uh uh-huh. um Yeah, but also i think the environment changed and like what we you evolved change, right? did you like did it evolve over that uh not just evolved but i think the the timelines also kind of uh, varied so in gujarat uh-huh. like i would be on the water by like 5:30 uh-huh. right? by 5:30 like i'd be on the beach like, right minimum mm. right uh, either launched or on the beach by 5:30 mm. right uh, and then you're you're doing about 6 to 7 or 8 hours minimum right, right. Uh, which means by about Uh, somewhere short of like two or three is when you get out of the water yeah right uh which is which is fair because uh, invariably everywhere along india 3 o'clock is is after 3 o'clock you don't get served lunch anywhere right so you have to time that correctly uh but it's basically you're on the water and then i think the first 20 minutes is just about uh finding your line hmm. which is basically the line that i follow like the imaginary line that i follow mm. uh the thing so you find that line and then you're like on it now uh, 20 30 minutes go there right uh, that's about like uh mm. which, which means you are about 2 2 and a half 3 kilometers out in sea right. right and then there things are a little calmer then you're like uh then you know then then it's basically on on or uh, I, i plot everything on my watch mm. right and i just follow that um and then you're on the water for 6 7 8 uh eight hours i think 11 uh is it 9 or 10 hours max that we've done i think about yeah, yeah about, about that much so about 9 to 10 hours is like the the max that you're going to be on the water right, right. uh even then you're so just that like would kind of amount to what 20 25 30 kilometers per day roughly uh no 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 no, no. uh yeah but so typically you do about 6 to 9 hours or so right right and that can be because you depending on the weather on the conditions right uh, i'm averaging about 5 to about 6 and a half kilometers an hour oh okay. right so right. so that's between about 25 to about 45 depending on the day right 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 so my largest i've done three stretches where we've hit 45 kilometers mm. uh, each of those was not less than 9 9 and a half hours mm. right uh, uh it, it's because after a point time you're going to slow down naturally yeah. but uh, the so the wind picks up by by afternoon right uh, you have your tidal deviations uh, along the coastline there are a lot of places where uh, where uh, the what where a river or a stream or something like that comes and mm. hits uh, hits the sea you slow down there with the tidal conditions again mm. uh, right uh by the by the afternoon because the winds the, the waves start picking up as well so you again invariably slow down there right and right? so it's so no day i mean it's there's no simple math to it like, and it, like if you're if you're going on a jog or a trek you can just stop and just have a sip of water is that possible when you're kayak, <laughs> yeah. kayaking just, uh, I, uh, i break to like no, you, catch up with you your breath or something like that yeah, yeah. uh huh because no, you don't you, even you have an anchor stop. or something like that right it's like you are like a bobbing duck no, no, basically no, no. yeah <laughs> Yeah, no. So it's it's not it's not like forming water all the right, whole right, time, right? right. Uh, there's a lot of areas where it's just like calm in itself, mm. right? Uh, but if you if you start if you say Gujarat, for instance, right? Uh, mm. If you look at the uh, uh, the whole coastline, a lot of the windmills, yeah. right? and the windmills are basically pointed inwards, right, uh, towards land, right, not away from land. It yeah, means that the wind is coming from land. Mm. So a lot of times if you're just like out there and and I saw this all along the coastline up to the dew mm-hmm. uh the wind would just push me out to sea right right and and then that's not very good waters to be in yeah. right uh, so invariably even stopping was uh, on on the gujarat coastline was uh, was an issue because you just they didn't know how far you were drifting right right and and uh, so 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 the wind was against you there so mm. uh, we start early in the morning where conditions were like slightly better more manageable that you'd be yeah. out as soon as possible uh, gujarat beaches are are um, are very treacherous right right uh, but all of that changes by the time you reach like say karnataka maharashtra karnataka maharashtra goa karnataka like a little karma karnataka gets a little rocky Mm. um but the wind was not that bad 
by the time I uh, reached the end of Karnataka, I just slipped into Kerala. The wind was coming the other way around, mm. right? Uh, and it would come from the sea, right? Mm. So there would be like these huge waves that would come up to like chest high and then hit me like perpendicular to the kayak. Right. But then, then you turn the whole way. Uh, so those conditions changed, right? right? Uh, mm. But by the time we reached Karnataka, invariably, what started out at 5.30, it became like uh, 6.30, it became 7. Yeah. Uh, it would be 8 as well, purely because like, you haven't got your rest. Mm. Right? It's just, uh, it, it was just that simple. You just needed to like sleep a little bit and like mm. even the half an hour sleep would just be like so good. Right. So, yeah. So and, and what, what uh, what's your uh, logistics with food, shower, toilet, communication? I mean, sure, these, so, these these things um, we take for granted yeah. when we are sit, sitting on a sofa, and you're not exactly uh, sitting on a sofa, no, right? So yeah. yeah. No, no, it's 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 pretty crazy. So so typically you'd probably imagine that like uh, you could probably stay on the beach, right? But mm. it's not necessarily safe. Mm. Right and uh, and also had uh, Shantali right uh, with mm. me. So first it is like super important. So now uh, so we we actually just find a spot like a yeah. like a hotel or a hostel or something like that to, to stay at. Mm. Right and then we just like stay there. Right mm. and uh, but a lot of the logistics is around uh, around this right. Uh, yeah. Where are you going to eat? Where are you going to put up? Where are you yes. going to like uh, get drinking water? Yes. Right. Like that's the that's the primary one because. We on the on the expedition, you're drinking like at least like six liters of water a day minimum. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Like that's the minimum that you're they're gonna do. So you're running through like a lot of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, food is not necessarily like that big a concern because you can eat anything. Yeah. Right. You're gonna burn it. Yeah. Right. So you can you can. A lot of people ask me like, what do you eat? And us and I'm like, I eat everything. Mm. Right. Like you give me thumbs up, I'm gonna drink thumbs up. Uh, you give me a pack of chips, I'm gonna eat a pack of chips. Uh, if you give me meat, I'm going to eat eat meat. Uh, it, it just says, it's just down to like, okay, is it hygienic? Okay, I can eat it. Mm. Right, like, that's about it. So, uh, but, but with the water, you have to have to get like water. You have to like be drinking on the water. You'll be drinking off the water. you drink before you sleep. you drink when you wake up. It's perpetual. Yeah, it's like, well, so, I'm just curious, right? So what are you carrying when you are in the kayak, right? So it's like, Oh, you have some communication device oh, plus a bunch of bottle of water, uh, water bottles, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so invariably, I'd have two phones, mm. right? Uh, the primary phone is not the smartphone; it's it's a simple satellite touch button, uh, uh-huh. touch button. No, 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 no. Okay. They're not that fancy. Oh, okay. But uh, I just have a simple uh, touch button phone, right? right. The old Nokia, mm. Nokia days, right? Uh, and that's the one you call from. Yeah. Right, and the the other one is just emergency. I usually carry about like at least two different uh, connections. Like right? mm-hmm. uh, uh, you carry an MTNL connection. In fact, an MTN or a BSNL connection. Those are right. those are the best. Right. Uh, so it's like what what is your uh, back out plan? So it's like if something goes wrong, you 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 can call some sort of uh, a coast guard. Are you just like no thread? You're just trading so around with no thread. So the coast guard knows about it. Mm. Uh, no, the Coast Guard knows about it, right? Mm. Uh, it, and the Coast Guard is also governed, I think, by state and then mm. upwards, mm. right? So every state has its own, uh, uh, you know, vigilance, I guess, yeah. right? Uh, but the Coast Guard is not necessarily the one that comes into play. Mm. So the way that the the water is is covered is uh, you have the something called the Marine Police. Okay. Right, it's a section of the police, right? Mm. Uh, but it deals with water. I think they, their jurisdiction is up to about ten kilometers. Mm-hmm. But after that, it's uh, because everything is in nautical miles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's five nautical miles that, uh, that the marine police looks at, and then after that is uh, the coast guard, and then finally it's the navy. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, it's the marine police, and then the coast guard, and then the navy. Finally. Right. But, uh, but it's basically a marine police that's going to come see you. Mm. Uh, because you're not first. going beyond so, like three four kilometers uh, away from the coastline, right? So no, yeah, no, no, yeah. But uh, but it depends on which which um, state you're in, mm-hmm. right? And that that determines how active the marine police is. Right. To be very honest, uh, Gujarat Gujarat coastline was superb. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody there was like spot on. Mm. Right. Uh, the marine police was like super active. Uh, the coast guard was great. Right. And luckily, I never met the Navy. Mm. Right. But I'm sure they <laughs> they were also like, uh, but they also understandably so, because that, that border is like needs to be heavily patrolled. Yeah. Right? Uh, 
frequent uh, impressions right. there. Yeah. So so um, anyway, yeah. So 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 that was that. So so mm. I was touched with the Coast Guard to be honest, right? Uh, and there was a amazing commander, uh, Commander Harish More. Uh, mm-hmm. who actually like flagged off my expedition. Yes, right? yes. And this was around the time that. where I didn't find, uh, find like the backing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it was, it was uh, Harish More who actually came in there and said, like, go do it. Uh, mm. like, well, he didn't say go do it, right? I don't think he can uh, technically say that, but uh, but he, he, he was like, a, he was an amazing backer. Yeah. Right? Uh, Bless so, you. In a so way. he actually signed off, he didn't sign off, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, he kind of blessed me because he basically took a letter that said like mm. received by the um, by the Coast Guard right mm. uh, on my plan, mm. uh, and the same piece of paper I have shown like in Gujarat all the way down to Kanyakumari when I finally landed, right, right, uh, and uh, and it got me through like a lot of tough spots. Mm. So so yeah, so I mean th- that's kind of like the second part of what I was coming to do the logistics, right. Uh, I think we're done with like the physical and mental. Yeah, three thousand. The second part is logistics. Three thousand three hundred kilometers of permissions yeah. is what you're talking a about. Lot of right? <laughs> uh, nobody's going to give you that. So, right. so, so if you, so very honestly, we we did try. Hmm. Uh, back in 2016, right? I think tensions with uh, with Pakistan were like uh, coming to a boil. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I did go down to Western Command, which uh, the coastal, uh, the Coast Guard Western Command, uh, which sits out of uh, Bombay. Right. Mm. Uh, and I said, Ki, boss, I'm going to do this whole thing across the West Coast. Right. Mm. Uh, can you sign off on it? Mm. Uh, and they said, no, we can't do that. Right. And, and that's kind of sad because uh, it, uh, why I say this is because when I did Bombay to Goa, right, mm. they had signed off on it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and And then it became like a uh, you know, sign of the times kind of a thing, plus, mm. uh, uh, you know, not having the permissions in place. Mm. And uh, then I spoke to another, you know, Navy commander, right, uh, amazing gentleman called Ablash Tommy, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and and he said, uh, uh, what's to stop you? And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> like, everybody's to stop me. So I said, uh, uh, if you sit around and wait for permissions to come, then you'll be waiting your whole life. Right. Right. Uh, and it was basically just on that uh, one call, right? That I said, okay, let's load up the car, <laughs> right? Like we have a we have a weather window, right? Yeah. Uh, we're just gonna go do this. Um, so so we went there. We, we went to Gujarat with like no permissions, uh, no sponsors, mm-hmm. very rudimentary plan. Uh, you know, the only thing I think we had when we got there was that we had trained enough for it. Right. That's, that's pretty much it. Right. Like everything else was like going to be kind of touch and go. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what, what were the biggest injuries that worried you on, on this expedition? So what really worried you when it was uh, playing through your head? Uh, I mean, there were no real like injuries, injuries per se, right? Like mm-hmm. I said, like if you train that hard, right? Like mm. I didn't capsize a single time. Yeah. Right. Like, which is superb, right? Mm. We had some fairly rough conditions. In fact, just like if, if you look at that, I think you've seen the Oak Tree video. If you look at the SF uh, mm-hmm. video, right, right, uh, which which covers the expedition, mm-hmm. right, uh, you'll see like the f- the day I launched itself, right, uh, yeah, and this was just out of Dwarka, right, and it's the mouth of this of the Gomti, I think, mm-hmm. right, uh, and I mean the the whole uh, the whole bank was full of people just like watching me do this, thing, yeah, right. And then you come, you see like a, uh, you know, a coastal commander come out there, this white shirt and the legs and like, uh, you know, somebody's breaking a coconut and all those sort of stuff. So it's like this whole amount of like fervor that's going on. Right. Uh, and then finally I get into the kayak and the thing was that, that we launched a little late that day, mm. right? Because we were just waiting for this, uh, you know, build up to happen. Right. Uh, and by the time, by the time we launched, right? Uh, uh, it was it was high tide, right? Right. So the way so the so the uh, sea was coming into the into the banks, right? Uh-huh. And what that meant is that when I when I reached the uh, outlet, right, there was a wave that was like end to end, right, like across the whole mouth of the river, uh-huh. right. And this wave was like taller than me, and uh, and it was it was already high tide, so the, uh-huh. so the sea was coming back in, 
uh, and by the time I reached like the mouth of the river, uh, there was like this, the, the sea was just basically kicking up like a whole wave, which was like end to end, right? Like, right. The whole, the whole width of the river, basically, there was like a wave that was like taller than me. Mm. Uh, and, and there was nothing I could do, right? Like I hadn't, I had actually technically not been in a kayak for like months because I was staying out of Bombay, that mm. Bom- Bombay has monsoons. Right. right. So, uh, so, so since, I mean, from, I'd say March till uh, September, right, mm. uh, you, you're not allowed to put uh, boats in the water and I basically right. quit my job in March. Right. Uh, so, and the, and the first thing you see is like this wave that's coming at you, right? Right. Uh, and there's there's nothing else that you could do, right? You mm. can't turn away, yep. right? Uh, this wave is going to chase you down, right? So mm. the only thing you had to do was like power through it, right? Mm. So I just went into sprint mode and then just like ran straight at the wave, right? Uh, and I cleared the first wave mm. and then there was another wave um, and I like cleared through that as well. Uh, and then finally, like you're on the other side, right? right? Uh, so, and then once I was on the other side, it was it was perfectly fine. And I remember because there was some, uh, I mean, I'd made some local friends there waiting around for these permissions and everything. Right. Uh, there was somebody who was a scuba uh, diving instructor, mm-hmm. uh, and he had taken his own like little vessel out, mm. right? And uh, and he was really struggling there because he was trying to like divert away from these waves. Mm. Right, uh, and I just like broken straight through, right, and right. Uh, so it was, it was fairly funny because I think Dad and Mom told me later that everybody on the banks were like waiting with like bated breath to see what would happen, mm. uh, and uh, everybody was like super relieved. Uh, so I'd say like injuries per se, um, not so much like mm. because we had mostly accounted or you had lead ourselves for yeah, it. Yeah, just you had the finger thing going. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the figure thing was, uh, was fairly, fairly bad. Cause, mm. um, I mean, I, I mean, one of the things that like I do from a media perspective on all mm. of these things is, um, you had to make the whole thing fun, mm. right? Like there's no way that, you know, yeah. you, you can sell a story, uh, or that was, I think about, about the grit and the dark side mm. and all of that sort of thing. I don't want, I don't want there to be like any negative connotations to this whole thing. Right. 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 So if you look at any of my like photos, mm. um, any of the stories that cover it, uh, and most importantly, like the Instagram piece, right. Yeah. Uh, everything is just, just bright smiling faces, right. Everybody's oh. like happy. That's uh, the point of Instagram. Sir. Shots and yeah. like uh, all the fun stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, but but no, not not just not just that. But I just wanted that to always be like yeah. a positive note to this whole thing. Got you. Uh, and it's only till like Kerala, mm. uh, when when you know when the the fingers basically started giving up, mm. right? Uh, uh, that there's just one photo from that expedition, right? Where mm. I am just like completely exhausted. Mm. Just completely like. It was crazy because I'd been woken up and I think it was in Trivandrum or something. Mm. Uh, and, and the pain was insane. Right? And we knew that we were at Trivandrum, which is like as close to yeah. the, the southern border um, you can get. Right? You're literally like five days or six days away from it. right? Mm. Uh, but the pain was just too much. Right. It was crazy. So this is just one photo that you know kind of captures it. Mm. So I'd say injury is not... Uh, not too much, right? Mm. You have your regular cramping and then uh, yeah. all of those pieces. Uh, but but the, the fingers were these three, like the main grip fingers on this side and the middle finger yeah. uh, on the left one, calloused and uh, I'm pretty swollen. Uh, t- tell me about the melt- mental strain, Rar, because uh, when I saw your story, I just totally remember the guy from the Life of Pi movie. Did you feel like that alone? Sometimes, <laughs> you know, marveling at the beauty of the sea, sometimes getting annoyed, thinking about what am I doing here with my uh, life? And tell me tell me more about the mental, uh, did this, did some funny yeah. things must have happened in your head, right? That's what, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, the, the Life of Pi movie, I think the timing of that thing was superb because mm. I've never stopped hearing references to that movie made, you know. It's, oh, yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, I'd say the, the mental part of it is, is fairly interesting and I'm not sure if the, if the movie necessarily captured it, right? No. Uh, yeah. But loneliness is is uh, is fairly debilitating, mm. right? And, uh, and I'd say like uh, when you're on the water, uh, 
there are a lot of i'd say negative thoughts or maybe not negative thoughts i think amplification of thought mm. right like you're just there and there's nothing around you so a lot of people are thinking that okay it's going to be beautiful and you've got all that uh, crazy trippy stuff going on uh, or you know like flying fish or whatever is depicted yeah. in that movie uh, and none of that really happens like uh, most of the times it's like 7 hours of me just looking at like uh, down at my kayak right mm. uh, or the bow of the kayak uh, because the sun is really harsh Mm. so so there's not there's not much i can see right it's, it's uh, i mean i get it the water is water is beautiful mm. it is blue water this crisp clear green water uh, the jellyfish there are going to be dolphins mm. uh, but that is probably just like less than 5 to 10% of the time right mm. 90 or 95% of the time it's just going to be like um, a large expanse of gray or shiny uh, light Right. right and uh, and there's not much you can do so all you have to do is just you know uh be with in your thoughts mm. right uh, i mean i've tried like a multitude of different uh, earphones right mm-hmm. like tons of them right I've, i've imported a whole bunch of you know waterproof uh, headphones none of that works okay. right so i don't have music right mm. i can't listen to something right uh, you can't be watching something right uh, you're just out there like 7 to 9 hours uh, a day just with your own thoughts mm. so what invariably happens is and there's no other external stimulus because like uh, you don't want people to call you you're not going to be checking your instagram or any of that sort of thing right you're not going to be texting anybody right uh, so it's just you with uh, you know whatever thoughts stuck around in the morning in your head mm. and you kind of hope that that's a good one right <laughs> because you're going to be thinking about that same thought for like 9 to 10 hours yes right uh, and there's one story because uh, uh, in in kerala there was like this negative thought because i got a call from one of my sponsors and he wasn't happy with something and mm-hmm. i was i was losing it mm-hmm. uh, like before i got on the tag right? right i was losing it because i was just like listen we we have given you more than what was agreed mm. uh, for you know the amount you you put into this that uh, i've done more for you without you asking for it mm. and then in that morning he sent off a uh, a very like i say flippant uh, email saying he, he wasn't happy and then for the next 8 hours i was purely in my head playing out every single thing that i've done for this guy right and i it just it was so frustrating because there's nothing i can do right i can't call this person i can't email this person i'm 3 to 5 kilometers out at sea uh, sun is bearing down on me right uh, so so it's just like the amplification of that one thought because it's just playing on and on and on in your head so i would say uh, it can be pretty crazy right yeah. if it's a good thought that's great right if it's a good thought and you're just thinking okay you know what this is the greatest day of my life but if it's a bad thought and you're out there for like 8 hours in this in me crazy so i can't properly gym when my boss drops an email like that in the morning i can't gym in the evening sir so you're out there out in the sea i totally get you <laughs> i get you right uh, pretty uh, much pretty right. much yeah. and and you don't see people for a long long time right how would you feel like at the end of the day when you see a human face right at the end of the day like or you see some random boat mm-hmm. random fisherman that must be the most beautiful sight of the <laughs> entire entire okay. expanse of the sea uh, yeah. that that you get to see all day right pretty much pretty much pretty much pretty much i i don't know if you actually like been too much on the water right but if uh-huh. you on the water like you will you will invariably see that everybody on the water is nice to you oh yeah right? and i think it's uh, it's a very simple truth right like um in adversity out there and like the the, the human uh, human touch is just like uh, it's just so free mm. yeah it's 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 in adversity right because uh, everybody else is is fighting the same elements right uh, yeah. if there's a if there's a fisherman out at sea right uh, he's going through the same stuff that you are uh, and he's seeing that you're doing it with a lot of motor mm. right uh, and but but he's obviously got his own you know like set of uh, problems right mm. um so so everybody is like really just nice to you mm-hmm. and i haven't i haven't met a single like person who's been grumpy or mm. uh, or not helpful uh and and that's i think 
I, I think that's just a general thing with with expeditions uh, that we found. Right, we of course one or two like bad instances, of course, mm. uh, notwithstanding. But uh, but people are just nice, mm. right? Like they see that you're going through stuff, and most people just kind of want to help, right? I I, right. I see like I feel that I face more adversity, I'd say. in a corporate environment daily then have would on that <laughs> right so talk about uh, that <laughs> yes on the water it's always nice yeah. right right yeah um so it's always good to good to meet people on the water yeah, yeah. you you are uh, you're an extrovert and water introvert in the corporate world so i get that <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I'm an introvert in the corporate world, but yeah, I think I I'm think, just, uh, just. I, I just, mean, a lot of this stuff just gets its volume uh, turned mm, down mm. because you've just seen like you know there's way worse stuff that can happen to you. You know, yeah. you you could be lost at sea. Right. Like your your kayak, uh, one of your buoyancies could like give up. Mm. Right. Uh, uh, you could bet get like. Right. bitten by a snake yeah. right like all sorts of stuff can happen to you like email is not you know the end of your life <laughs> right like all this is not yes. a major setback right so oh. so it does get its uh, volume turned down so right T- tell me about that incident that i saw in the video where one guy one guy was trying to tug your boat by throwing the rope or something like that is that uh, very briefly and quickly what were those the were those the most dangerous moments <laughs> you were very uh, Uh, where you got really nervous in a way because you, you know for a moment that someone else couldn't hurt you or something like that. Uh, so, so, so this is a it's a funny funny uh, story. This actually mm. happened in when I just crossed over to Kerala, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and full disclaimer, I had known that like something like this could happen somewhere mm-hmm. along the expedition because I'd heard it happened to other characters, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh but it's uh but i think the main thing in in all of these things is to stay a little calm mm-hmm. right uh, not get too perplexed mm-hmm. uh what what happened was i had slipped in i mean we were in mangalore that day and uh, mangalore was southern most tip of uh, karnataka yeah. on the coast uh and then we slipped into uh, into kerala i can't remember the name of the um uh, the immediate port but it's right. the first fishing port uh just in the north of kerala right, right. Uh, and and this boat starts coming at me right and uh, most people are really nice so mm-hmm. like i said like you usually just wave when you uh, you know establish uh, a rapport there yeah. right wave and smile and i was doing this and this guy said nothing and then he came about and then uh, there were there were two of them one of them was on the motor and the other guy was in front right. um, and he and uh, uh, he he basically had like a rope in hand Right. and then he comes close to me <laughs> and then he's uh, and then i'm trying to have this conversation with him and he says nothing but something struck me as uh, being a little odd so mm. so he came by and then he comes along uh, alongside my bow which is like the front of the uh, the front of the boat right mm-hmm. uh, and then he he basically like throws this lasso at me and right? mm. he tries to catch me while i'm sitting in the in the car and i felt something was odd so basically i put the brakes on which is just like jam my uh, paddle right in right mm. so i slowed down and this guy went over and it lasso uh, just fell in the front of my kayak mm. and then slid straight off me mm. right uh, and i was and then i started doing circles around him right, right. because he's got a big uh, big boat right so yeah. it's not very maneuverable so i just started ducking him right mm. and i was like listen what is it why don't you talk to me mm. right like just talk to me right like i'm not going anywhere like yeah. i can't outrun you uh right. so so why don't you speak uh and then i can't remember if it was like broken uh, broken hindi or broken english something like that mm-hmm. uh, but he basically tried to communicate with to me that like uh uh something about the police right mm-hmm. and i was like are you police uh, and he was like no 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 and then he's like no you talk you talk to the police i said sure like i'm always happy to talk to the police mm-hmm. right and uh, then he finally like got somebody on Uh, on the on the call mm. uh, passed me the phone and I said I'll come to you but you do not like do not like put your uh, yeah. put put a rope on me ah. like like don't touch my car and uh, and then I got the phone and then I stepped away from him a little bit and then I spoke to the uh, the, the chap on the other hand mm. on the other end and he is basically like the marine police right, right? and uh, he is like uh, uh, who are you blah 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 all this mm. stuff stuff I said, listen, I'm just a kayaker. Like, mm. I have all the papers and the documentation. If you want me to come down, I'll, I'll come and like uh, mm. speak to you. 
Hmm. Right. Uh, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Then he had me like give my name. Uh, he noted my whole name and then he told me which like, station to come to and all that stuff. Right. Uh, and then I give the phone back to this person. Uh, and by now, like both of them are like a little calm and like one of them just like pulls out a BD and then he lights it up. And then he like starts offering me the BD and I was like, no, no, no that's cool. <laughs> like, I know we're friends now, but right. <laughs> well, let's not do this. Uh, and then, then he went away. Oh. Uh, then he went away and then I went went down to the police station later that day. Mm. Uh, and it's really funny because <laughs> uh, so we went down to the police station completely voluntary, voluntary mm-hmm. of course, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we explained the story, we showed them like all the uh, press articles right. and you know my paper from uh, Commander Mori, mm. right? Uh, uh, the Coast Guard commander. Mm. And um, and then and then these guys basically say hey, this is great. Right, and can we take a photo with you? Look. Right, and uh, and so we so we, we had this random police station, uh, and they take a photo of me, hmm. and then uh, later that evening, right, I get a call from some press person, yeah. right, and he's like, oh, so we heard you landed in in uh, in Kerala and all of this sort of stuff, and is it true that this police station caught you? Yes. And I said, yeah, it's true. I mean, in a, in a manner of saying, I guess it caught me. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then the next morning, the local newspaper there covered that uh, this police station was the first police station in the whole of the coastline to catch cows. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. That's great. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a funny story. Right. Um Quick question, sir. So what are the moments that really made you feel like, yeah, this was worth it? Uh, well, I still don't know if it was worth it. Right. Uh, I definitely had a lot of fun. Mm. Right. Um, um, I, mean, I mean, it's difficult to say what is worth it. Right? Like, uh, did we achieve like the, the objective? I, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, for sure. I mean, we did get the, get the word out, right? I, mm. I'd say, um, am I, I mean, uh, would I do it again? For sure. Mm. Right. Uh, Am I done? Probably not. Hmm. Right. So uh, difficult to quantify that. Right. Can't really answer uh, that. Uh, but, w- bad moments, worst moments, most dangerous moments where you thought like, why did I do this? Why Why did I come here? Oh, I think straight off the bat on day one, right? Which hmm. is, uh, uh, I mean, we left Bombay on the 12th of November, right? And hmm. uh, it took us two days of, of uh, driving, right? I think... Hmm. Um, I can't remember the exact distance, right? But uh, it, it's something about 1,500 odd kilometers of driving, right? Uh-huh. right? Uh, from from Bombay to Ahmedabad and from Ahmedabad all the way to Dwarka. Yeah. Uh, so we did that in two days, right? Uh, ridiculous trip. And then we said, okay, you know what? Like, uh, since we're here, let's just launch. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think it was like the 14th. I think it was the 14th, mm. uh, 12th, we did it, 13th, we did it, 13th night, we run with it, yeah. Uh, 14th morning is when we said, that, okay, like, you know what, like, let's just get started, mm. right? Let's just do this. Yeah, because uh, it, it had been, like, a really tough, like, I'd say six to eight months, like, mm. building up to this, right? Uh, and I just wanted to get it started. Right. And uh, and nobody let me. Mm. Like, the police, police literally said, okay, no, we can't let you go. Right. Right. And, and I was like, Jesus Christ, I've literally like <laughs> traveled all this way. Uh, I've, you know, brought my parents here. Uh, Shantali is prepped and ready. We've quit our jobs for this. Uh, and uh, Indian bureaucracy won't let me go. And then for three days, basically, we were in that, uh, you know, dusky town. Mm-hmm. Uh, just trying to start something. Right. That uh, nobody like backed, believed in, uh, even cared about. Mm. Right. Uh, it literally was just. I'd say nobody wanted to take that risk to say that okay, like we let him go. Yeah. Right. Uh, and nobody understood what we were trying to do. Mm. So I'd say I'd say that was like the start itself was fairly rough. Right. right. Which is why I think uh, meeting Commander Mumuri was probably like the I think the best thing that happened to that expedition. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what, what changed you in a person after this trip, right? So people, when people take uh, expeditions like this, they just come back change, as a changed person. So did you come back as a changed person? What lessons you learned? Um, what changed in you in a way? 
did I come back as a changed person? I, I think I should let like, my my wife <laughs> answer that. I, I don't think she thinks I changed at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, she thinks I'm still, no, did did it make you more humble or thing. something like that? It's just... uh, no, fair. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I like to believe that like I've always uh, edged that line of uh, of the the humble. But it did at least like um, I, I'd say that the main thing is that it 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 dialed down the uh, you know the volume on what we on a day to day basis think is important mm. right it it kicks in kicks in amount of patience to it right and uh, and lets you just like take on some of these um, you know you'd say life changing things uh, you know a little a little better right mm-hmm. so uh, for sure now it's like okay think i can see that you have sent this email that seems like super important uh, like let's you know let's prioritize that a little better so right. i i think and that's kind of like what i do uh for my job as well i'm a product manager so a lot of it is to come finally comes down to prioritization and taking like a bunch of decisions right uh, and from that perspective it does like help me just clear my mind a little bit and say okay, okay like what is truly important mm. right and uh, i mean that this i'd say it just comes with i'd say a little bit of maturity to say that right. okay you know what i'm you know i can see that this is going to be a bit of a conflict right now but it's mm-hmm. going to like probably pan out in a couple of months right, right. so yeah um, so so it it i think it add, it added that dimension for sure because mm-hmm. earlier i would just be like guns blazing go at everything right yeah. but now it's like okay let's you know take a call that is this really good decision mm-hmm. but do i need to like should i be should i get that paper or that who should i press for right like before i do that so so there is that right um last topic uh, what is tougher mm-hmm. is east coast tougher than the west coast uh, very top quick challenges in your mind uh, if you can keep it very brief uh, no so i think the east coast is got its own challenges mm-hmm. right um, uh, hospitality right i think the uh, uh it's uh, the east coast is supposed to be less hospitable mm-hmm. right uh, the waves are like supposed to be more treacherous the beaches are like supposed to be a little more rocky mm. uh, slash more inclined so mm-hmm. this is going to be that uh, the large stretches of um, land that there aren't there isn't habitation there's mm. probably not going to yeah. be a lot of people right uh, it's less it's less mapped out mm. right uh, but on the other hand right uh, we have now done one whole coast mm. right so there's like already a wealth of experience there yeah. right so uh, so i think now that we've got you know the west coast under our belt right mm. uh, it, it's 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 an experience that like um, nobody else has right, right? and uh, that that just that just makes it a little more doable i'd say mm. right um, and in terms of you know logistics on the ground you know getting the permissions up and up and running we have a lot more credibility when it comes to that mm. right so so most of those pieces are probably uh, already handled right yeah. uh, now it's about a, about when we could mm. do that right mm. uh, so there is an additional interesting element to this it's probably like uh, we might not we might not uh, do the cycling this time we might just do the kayak yeah so it might be might be way more interesting if uh, both chantley and i are in the water oh wow yeah yeah so it might be fun but uh, but nothing set in stone purely because 2020 is you know the way 2020 is right uh, can't say what so, happens here's the thing you said uh, east coast waters are not hospitable you said 2020 has not been so kind here's here's one here's mm-hmm. one thing that i'd like to be i'd like to be a little more hospitable and a little more kind because i come from the state that is on the east coast andhra pradesh mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure you will end up somewhere in the uh-huh. gunto district beach of bapatla or something like that sure. i know people there i hope i uh-huh. hope in the wildest of the wildest possibilities <laughs> i hope i can catch up with you one day on that shore when you do oh, this thing great. on that's the great. on the coastline of andhra oh, pradesh sir I, I very much look forward to it. So, so these are actually the pieces that really actually do work out. You won't believe this, but mm. a lot of people just just uh, just make it a point to just like say that they will come down, and and I and I end up meeting like a whole bunch of fabulous people on the water. 
Like oh. uh, I met this amazing couple in in uh, in Bangalore. Uh, bumped into amazing people all along the coast of Gujarat, mm. uh, who were like really nice, just just the best, right? Mm. And uh, uh, my batchmate actually flew down uh, to Trivandrum mm. to catch me on the uh, at Kanyakumari. So right. I, I think it's one of the, the the best parts to be able to like actually meet people uh, who kind of get what you're doing. So. So Sir, yeah, I, 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 well. I, I won't be on the water. Trust me, I have water phobia, but I will be on the beach waiting for you with a coconut in hand and hopefully smash it uh, as a sign of good luck <laughs> in some sort of way. Um, help you with the language super, or something super. like that. Right. So, uh, sir, yeah, sir, please, uh, please do this when, whenever you can and look forward to it. Look forward to catch up with you in real, Absolutely. in the wildest of possibilities. Thank you very much for doing this podcast. Absolutely. And uh, what what do you, as a parting message what what can you say about how far a human being can push mentally or physically in whatever the endeavor he's about to take oh wow that's a good question um well but hmm how how do i put this i'd say that you're basically just limited by like what you think is capable right? hmm. um at the at the start i mean i'd say in 2010, if somebody had told me that, okay, you're going to like cover the whole coastline of India uh, on a human powered vessel, right? I would probably like not believe it myself. Right? Mm. Uh, but here it is, here I am. And now I'm like, okay, East Coast is tough, but I think we'll get through it, right? We, right. we, we should be the first people to uh, tag this whole coastline, right? I'd love mm. to do that. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's about, uh, it, it's more about challenging yourself right right uh, and finding out like where your uh, borders lie rather than somebody else enforcing that right so so i would say that uh, um I, I think the good thing with stories like this or with you know annex alex holland or uh, on, uh colin o'brady you know whoever you are yeah yeah or any of your hmm. uh, adventure sports uh, icons is right like it, it just opens out, uh, I'd say, a world of possibility, mm. right? Uh, and say, okay, okay, you know what? I didn't think that was possible, right? Uh, which is why I think the, the the whole, you know, the coastline of India, I thought was uh, was also very important for, for an Indian to do, right? Uh, because we just see these, you know, um, I'd say foreign legends doing all of these things and yeah. everybody asks the same questions. Uh, was that a lot of us looking outwardly to like the world, right? Like invariably start seeing all these legends abroad. That's, yeah. Uh, and in our minds, it's it's very easy to say that, okay, you know what, but uh, it's different, the country that he's in mm. and the background that he's had. Uh, and this is not something that like we can aspire to, but, mm. but the minute you say that, okay, you know what, there's an, there's, there's an Indian who, who's, who's uh, you know, who started just recently, right, yes. and then just went and did this, uh, it just becomes more doable, mm. right, like for everyone, right? So, so uh, while I might be like the first uh, Indian to kayak the West Coast, I don't think I'll be the like, last Indian to, right. uh, to, to, to the West Coast. And that's kind of like the, uh, kind of like the hope as well. Mm. Um- Sir, here's the thing. Uh, your presence as an Indian in the adventure sport means a lot to an adventure geek like me. And, and I'm inspired to complete that pending Nandi Hills trip that I didn't complete. I'll, I'll go and finish that as soon as possible, whenever oh. it's possible. And uh, yeah, th- thank you very much for your time on this podcast. Uh, this episode means a lot. And I hope my listeners and viewers feel oh. the same. Uh, it's been wonderful chatting to you, sir. That's it from the Solo sure. Podcast. Ladies and gents, till we see you next time again with another interesting guest. Bye, everyone.